All right, welcome to episode five of the Culture and Cannabis podcast. We have an amazing episode today. I'm here uh, with my co-host, full-time Tony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's good? And, and of course, my name is JC Coates. I'll be your host. And we have Rebecca Perrick here today, the Las Vegas leader for Women Grow. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. We're, listen, we're, we're really excited that you're here. So thanks for coming. Oh my goodness. Thank you for inviting me. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to connect with your community. Yes, of course. And so this is Culture and Cannabis episode five now. Number five. Yeah. And so just to kind of frame up what Culture and Cannabis is, the, epi- um, the podcast essentially, you know, we dive into the influencers, the activists, the artists um, in and around the cannabis industry and kind of dive into that culture and what that looks like and just kind of give you guys a uh, um, more eye-opening view of what this cannabis industry truly is. Exactly. Yeah, I couldn't have said it any any better. Yeah, I feel like I said uh, cannabis just a little bit too much, but it's all right. Cannabis. Cannabis. <laughs> cannabis. <laughs> so, Women Grow. Let's. What, what is that? So, we're cultivating cannabis leaders. We're uh, a platform for companies to interact and grow. Um, we want to educate. We want to empower. We want to connect the community. And they gave me my start. So I actually, you know, three and a half, four years later, I get to run the company that helped me uh, springboard into this industry. That's awesome. So, the, you know, the, the mission is essentially helping women grow within the cannabis community. Mm-hmm. Educate, empower, connect. That's awesome. And I see you at a lot of events. What do you, what do you usually do at these events? Um, so I help facilitate learning. Each event is different. I try to really get to know the companies that are going to sponsor, participate, um, so we can really shine a, a more unique spotlight on them and figure out what the right approach is to help um, create awareness in the community for them and talk about conversations that really need to be had. We've, we've had everything from panels on the transition from opioids to cannabis. Um, let's talk terps uh, with very interactive terping tables, trying to bring education to life. Um, so each event we're trying to do something special. It'll never be you know, just a conversation. Um, we really try to make it immersive, fun, interactive, um, and keep the education flowing to the topics that really need to be heard. And it's really great to connect all different facets of the community and, and start to overlap with the 420 friendly community and, and bring connections to those businesses too. It's been a, it's been a journey. T- t- have you been to one of these? Uh, uh, no, I haven't. Uh, and I was just wanted to ask you, like, yeah. you know, I haven't, I haven't had the opportunity to come down here and check it out. I definitely ha- need to. Um, so Rebecca's doing an amazing job. So I, I've been to, I want to say are close to like 10 of them. Um, and they happen on a monthly basis. Right. And, uh, it's, it's it's a great time, right? And so you get registered, right? You have to you have to RSVP if you're a business. I think you can uh, participate at a, a super low cost. And uh, um, but but yeah, I went and it's just like you know, it's it's almost like a family, right? And uh, there's there's businesses. You have you have panels and topics and speakers, and it seems to be in a different place all the time. So this is a good time. Yeah, it's a good time. It sounds fun. You're coming with me. Next <laughs> <time>. <laughs> next, <laughs> next one. When, when is the next one? The next one is going to be April 11th. Oh, I'll be in town. There yes, you will be in town. Perfect. perfect. We're going, timing. bro. What's What's the April 11th event look like? Um, so it's going to be uh, teaching people more of a do-it-yourself approach. A lot of people don't realize, you know, that you don't have to just smoke flour. That you can infuse your whole wellness routine with cannabis. So we have um, a few different speakers. I don't want to give anything um, too much away yet mm-hmm. um, as we still solidify. Um, but we have a really, really talented herbologist coming in. Uh, I think a lot of people realize the value of the cannabis plant, but there are so many plants in nature that we can connect to, that we can derive value from. Um, and I think the methods of infusion are really important, too, um, with my background um, in sales and education. I think it's really important that people understand that there's always the right terpene profile for the right ailment. There's always the right strain for that. Um, but there's the right topical for localized pain relief, the right patch to go through the skin to the circulation, um, send relief right to your bloodstream. You can dip your whole body and a bath filled with relief you can have a tincture like a multivitamin i mean there's uh very large uh you know there's we're still inventing new ways to absorb cannabis so that'll be um exciting but i think people should learn more about infusing their wellness routine so um as we close to 420 i thought it would be really fun to create more of an immersive do-it-yourself um experience um i don't want to give too much away i'm still uh, spinning the wheels on the creative too as we nailed on those things so some things could shift by then um but i think it's really important that people learn you know how how to infuse their lifestyle with cannabis in a healthy way. Maybe smoking, uh, maybe the act of incinerating something is not good for a certain person, but they should still enjoy all the benefits and tinctures, I think, um, are not nearly uh, used as widely as they should be. So I think this will be a really fun event. 
Um, and I think, um, you know, as far as, you know, bringing the, the companies in, like you were saying, we, we go for that micro sponsorship approach. You want everyone to come in um, and add, you know, their specialty to um, our environment. We, we reach out, you know, from the top down. We, we try to go to companies to ask them to facilitate access for networking, for continuing education for their team members. Um, we realize how expensive, you know, tickets can be. So we really try to drive the cost downs by having companies in the cannabis community come together to help support it. So ticket prices can be much lower than they traditionally traditionally are um, and that companies can provide access so you know that person's not spending their lunch money for a few days on the event instead they get to come in wearing their dispensary shirt putting up a banner giving them some representation um, and uh, inclusion in everything from our email campaign to you know the day of the event um, so we really want all the companies um, to get involved um, and if you know they can't you know figure out the right participation package we also do um, charity raffles too every month um, since I've started with them we've given back to a different cause um, um, live art has been one of the most um, incredible things uh, to get great results for a raffle. But each month we're getting so many, um, you know, donations or ideas or gift cards um, that we've had to really expand what we're doing um, and actually push some raffles to the next month, which has been really exciting. Um, so with that, you know, it's a great way for companies that are on the verge thinking of participating um, to see what it's like to, to get excited about their products, to give them that shout out and to raise money for something beautiful each month on top yeah. of you know what we do um, traditionally through Women Grow. Yeah, it, that's it, awesome. It, it is awesome. And <clears throat> you know, your the events, you know, if you're in the cannabis industry and, and, and you have a you know, a business, get involved with Women Grow because it is a valuable experience, right? It's it's more than just a party, it's more than just an event, it's more than just a conversation like you mentioned. Uh, you guys are constantly, you know, pushing, you know, the envelope and trying to do things in in, in a valuable way. Um, and, and let's let's talk about the you know you keep bringing up the wellness right with with the cannabis. Let's talk about for you right, and I'll start with with me right, and, and we'll get to you too. Okay, Tony. I, I guess yeah, I yeah. Uh, put you on the spot here, but like <laughs> you know for, for for you know cannabis in my life right, uh, part of my wellness routine right. I'm I'm 43 years old. Um, if I don't watch it, I'm gonna you know get fat and lazy <laughs> and all this stuff. So I have to get my ass to the gym right, um, and you know that's part of my routine i'll wake and bake right that's what it used to be called but you know i'll wake up and i'll s use cannabis i'll put in a podcast i'll feed my mind and then i'll go out for a run and i can just kind of like you know get into that zone where i'm kind of like high and i'm listening and i'm exercising and it just it's just a kind of like a meditative state for me and i i do that every day and that's part of my my wellness cannabis you know process let's talk about yours what, what, do, what do you do on a, on a wellness tip with cannabis in your life every day um, I think you know I think there's a time and a place for all kinds of high and all kinds of activities sometimes I really enjoy being stationary with the right indica um, and not getting to the gym um, I enjoy working out I've lately I've been on uh, the hot Pilates kick trying to um, force myself to get motivated to be in a room where you know it's just not an option to stop going so you you just keep pushing through um, but my favorite uh, thing that I do um, and my other job, my other passion really, just a huge uh, piece of my life is aerial yoga. I'm, I'm a certified anti-gravity instructor, so every Saturday morning I wake up and I get to teach a combination of acrobats, um, you know, and people with chronic pain. Um, it can be something that's really gentle or something that's a very extreme Las Vegas uh, Cirque style um, sport. We have hammocks that hang from the ceiling, so I hang people upside down and we suspend. Um, you hang by the lumbar, the sacral spine, um, and the point of suspension is where you get the most traction, the most space between the vertebrae. So I get a lot of people who come in with chronic pain um, that are using their own, you know, regimens, whether they're on medications, whether they have a tilt table in their garage that straps them by their ankles and then they hang upside down um, to relieve the pain. You know, I get very extreme results with just, you know, one class, a fourth an inch back into the spine, at least it's the, the Christopher Harrison guarantee from the, the founder of anti-gravity. So I get to, um, I get to work on these devices um, and teach aerial fitness classes, um, everything from acrobatics, um, I did a birthday party for Ariel Kids last week. That's cool. Um, and I saw the same family um, for their birthday party last year for Ariel Kids, which is a completely different curriculum um, for a few years before that. Um, so that's one of my favorite parts of the job is getting to see people grow up, getting to see the same person uh, make a huge <coughs> change in their wellness routine and stick to it and show up in shape years later, still regulars in your class. Um, and for me, you know, I couldn't, I can't medi medicate because I'm instructing. Um, so people's safety is in my hand, but it's really nice to be a student um, and it's really nice to have that effect. On, on people's wellness. Um, for me, there's also a huge sensory piece because um, you get that swaddle, that hug from every side.
outside. It's um, not just a fitness device, um, but it's really um, soothing to the senses. So something like that um, helped me connect to my wellness, to my body, to my breath. Um, as such a hyperactive, just crazy, passionate person, um, I don't stop moving. Um, and I got into that crazy swing device and I just, I sat still. My body quieted, my mind followed, and I was able to relax uh, more than I ever could. Um, and I really, um, I became an instructor about two months later and Gosh, that was, say, 2012, 2013. So uh, wherever town I go, I, I find an aerial studio, and then I build a life. Um, and that's just a, a huge piece of what I do here. And I think, um, you know, people need to find the right piece of their wellness routine. I used to love um, getting the right, you know, cannabis influence for a workout. When I was running outside, I was able to smoke. When I was um, running on a treadmill, I couldn't. Um, because then I, you know, when you have your surroundings motivating you and you're running somewhere beautiful, um, you can get lost in that. You can get lost in the playlist the visuals, everything is easier. And you actually have better gas exchange um, with edibles, with, with cannabis. Um, I know the idea, the act of smoking, breathing that in makes it seem like it's rough, but once you know it's in your body and it's processed, you have, should better endurance. It's, uh, I mean, they're obviously, uh, you know, need to uh, get the research and the development for us to be able to use these things. But I see so many uh, representatives um, in the fitness space that, you know, get high and run marathons or do these things that I couldn't do high, sober, oh. anything, um, you know, that you strive to, to be. And for me, um, I would really uh, enjoy when I lived in Florida, um, you know, running on the beach. Uh, there was the most beautiful garden that ran up the middle of the island I lived on. And that was, you know, there was always the right high for that. Um, but then sometimes, you know, safety, it's really important. Um, when I take a hot Pilates class, I will only have water in my system, tons of water. Um, you, you just can't afford to, uh, you know, not be at your peak, especially if you're going to, you know, risk getting dehydrated. Um, I think there's a time in a place for everything, for food, for wellness, for fitness. And I think that um, people need to, you know, just learn what, what's good for their body because what works for you with the same exact workout may make you paranoid, make you short of breath. Um, everybody is so unique. Um, and I think that you just have to find the right high for your fitness routine and it will take you deeper into your practice, whatever that practice may be. Nice. Yeah. Use, using cannabis for for wellness. Oh yeah, Tony? you know, you know, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been doing a lot of my, me and my girlfriend have been doing a lot of uh, orange theory. As you know, I took you to one of those classes, and we and we waked and baked before. Nice. <laughs> nice. And how, how, how that and that's honestly my favorite way to do it, is like high intensity um, workouts, just that like getting your heart rate up there and smoking before is nice because you can really zone out while you're doing stuff like that. So. It's def it is, and you're right. It's definitely not for everybody, right? It's, and, it's and, definitely not for uh, everybody. Yeah, and, and it could be dangerous. I'm not saying get definitely. on a treadmill and, <laughs> and, and smoke cannabis, but but uh, for me, and I think what you're talking yeah. about is that that meditative kind of like that disassociation from the pain. Yeah. Uh, and and just to, to bullshit, you know, the, to the you know life stresses, right? Like, um, I'm an active user of cannabis. I use it throughout the day. I use it when I wake up, when I go to bed, before I go to the gym. So, um, I'm very I have a high tolerance to it. So I can like I can function on it. So I can go hit the gym or mm -hmm. go to a meeting, you know, right before right after smoking. Like that doesn't, that doesn't really affect me. But um, so it's not it's not great for everybody. Like some people get super weird or paranoid, like you like you're talking about. So yeah. But yeah, Orange Theory. And if you are <laughs> if you're an active cannabis user, smoke some weed and go check out Orange Theory. <laughs> or yeah, Orange Theory might not be hyped, and I'm telling you to go do this, but I'm letting the people know. I, I did it. I, you, you, you'll be fine. I promise. Yeah. Uh, and I think topicals too. Uh, a lot of us always think about flour and what kind of high goes great true. with your wellness routine. Well, think about your recovery. Cannabis is the key to your recovery too. Um, there are phenomenal uh, topicals on the market where you don't even have to get high. You can rub the relief on it and it's almost instantaneous. Um, I think uh, what's really cool to hear is, you know, massage therapists, you know, by the time they're done giving a massage with their topical, their hands feel better than when they started instead of hitting fatigue or getting achy. And I think I'm um, a huge part of everyone's wellness routine should be the, the topical recovery, the massage element. Nice. Sort yeah. of piece. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, are you a CBD user? Yeah. Trying to get uh, more into it, more regular. I enjoy uh, having CBD in my wellness routines, but I'm just now learning that you need certain thresholds, you know, and, you know, a steady dosage. So I'm yeah. trying to um, be a smarter consumer. I'm still learning. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, and it's it's, it's a learning process, right? Like, um, I'm fortunate enough I got to work with a guy named Brandon, um, and he uh, he owns Harmonious CBD, and uh, he's taught me a lot about, you know, you know, the dosing and being you know, being consistent and what, what it can do if you are consistent. And so I've been taking Harmonious CBD every day for like almost a year now, and I have seen mad improvements from it. So that that that's also a really big part of my wellness. Yes, yeah, so CBD's definitely uh, helped me with my anxiety a little bit. Yeah, um, definitely. Um, 
it, it, it's not the cure-all for me. Um, you know, for me, I had, you know, anxiety about, you know, just day-to-day -day work. Sometimes I would just, like, pop the, the laptop and uh, get almost get an anxiety attack, right? It's like, you know, can I get this all this stuff done or whatever? And, um, you know, a lot of that was self-talk, right? And, and I had to unravel a lot of that stuff. But CBD kind of helped me through that process too. But, uh, I mean, cannabis for wellness. I mean, who'd have thought, right? When, when, when we're smoking weed, you know, ditch in school and, and 16, <laughs> I mean, that was kind of like how I started for me. Like <laughs> how did, you know, I never would have thought that we'd be here, you know, uh, using that as pre-workout. Using as pre-workout. <laughs> <laughs> I was the same way. I never would have thought I, you know, as, as I came across it, I, I didn't feel like I was doing anything wrong. I felt like, well, why would I go drink? It, you know, that felt way more dangerous. Yeah. And, you know, now you, you look back um, and all the parents who would try to get you in trouble for doing mm -hmm. anything controversial, they want to know about cannabis, edibles, pain, mm -hmm. sleep, CBD. Um, you know, my family, I'm very lucky to have such a supportive family, but they come from very traditional, you know, healthcare backgrounds. They have a doctor for a father, um, a social worker for her mom, a, a mom who did drug and alcohol counseling, people who really saw the other side of when these things go wrong, when they see cannabis as a gateway, because that's all that's past their you know paths yeah. um, and I think that really you know makes a difference um, having that and now they they come to me with a million questions <laughs> and you know I it's been really fun I got to take them for a tour the lab uh, coat the hairnet walk through um, one of my the facilities that gave me my start here as well um, and show them you know what we're doing um, it's incredible it's something I'm just so proud of but it's it's you know different it's controversial mm -hmm. um, but I think a part of me always knew um, that it was something I shouldn't be sorry for it was mm -hmm. something that um, I felt was healthier and because I have a very hyperactive mind um, it was way better than any Adderall could have ever been yeah but it takes time and learning and challenging what you think you know to get to that point because at that point you know you're you're opposing pharmaceuticals you're you're doing something illicit mm -hmm. um, but when you know that it's the right thing for your body and you're just trying to do what's right for your body and you know make sure other people mm -hmm. hopefully have those options too you know other people don't need to get hooked on all these other medications there's this option out there but because of what we're told so many people just don't get that chance and I think we're really fortunate to have had that and I just wish I could you know go back in time and share that knowledge with other people yeah, yeah. that stigma no. And, you know, as someone like, yeah, like you touched on Adderall, you know, I, I used to take Adderall a lot. Um, you know, I got, I got diagnosed with ADHD in college and uh, um, I made the switch to cannabis and it was just so much better on my body. Right. And with cannabis and CBD regularly, you know, it just helps me keep focused and calm. Like you said, like I'm super high strong, as my friends know. And uh, and yeah, so I definitely agree with you on that. Yeah, that's dope. I'm, I, I think that. It's cool that you know your your dad's a doctor, right? And and you touched on your your mom's a social worker, and and you know we have to dive into all that now. You know I know this, the stigma is still real, and you, your background and and to where you are now makes you I think a really unique leader in in this industry. And hopefully we can d dive into all that stuff. But let's talk about more of the event process for you, right? And um, you know for me as as an event marketer. Um, when I got to know you, I kind of felt like this uh, this immediate connection. I was like, all right, she, she's as crazy as I am, right? You know, she, 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 she's exactly immersed in I this. Know. Yeah, because we are. We're immersed in this event process, right? That n It's relentless. It never goes away. We do it every month. Um, and, and the kind of the model that, you know, the events that we do is, you know, you have your attendees and you have your, your vendors and you have your speakers and it's all this stuff. And, so, you know, <laughs> why? <laughs> why? Why did you choose event marketing of all things in the cannabis industry? I, you know, it, it kind of found me, um, you know, I have a, a background in health and wellness, and I thought, you know, I want to get involved in the science of the plan. But the more I spoke to people, the more I just glowed when it came to education and um, actually just working with people. Um, so I didn't actually get to go behind the scenes of the plan. Um, and then with, with this, this all, um, you know, I got to speak. I got the honor of speaking at an LVMMA panel about edibles. Um, and once I was heard, um, a lot of people went to speak to me after, and that's when opportunity started to um, arise and um, I got the chance to, to take a leadership role with the society that gave me their start uh, my start but it was never anything I planned if I could go back in time I would have minored with technology and marketing um, I am you know learning on the go for some of those things but I feel really passionate about it and I feel like I'm in the right place um, and some of these things come natural to me but some of these are huge learning curves and I'm very lucky to um, get to have other people in the industry who understand what we go through um, because you don't get 
to take a break. It has to go on whether or not you've had a hard day, a hard week, a hard month. You still need to plan. You know, it, it still needs to happen. You can't um, just, you know, press pause. Um, and then there are just a lot of moving pieces. Um, I like to plan things that are special, more intricate, but that involves just a crazy amount of planning sometimes. Um, and I tell people, um, you know, there's a bride. You know, she plans one wedding. She goes crazy for one event. I'm like, I am a crazy person once a month. And I'm okay with that because it, it lights up fire i'm really passionate about what i'm doing and every time i get to the event i'm scrambling i the first event i got a fiberglass splinter that was a little debilitating and i can look back at that now and laugh but it's a scramble no matter how early you get there you know you got to make sure everything flows smoothly but then you hit that moment when you're at the event where you just you take a step back and you look at the room buzzing the connections i see jobs and friendships and all of these things blooming um and i see all the the impact that we make and that makes it worth being a crazy person uh, for the rest of you know the the, the buildup, uh, you know, but I just, um, and I think uh, now I'm starting to learn um, how to maximize my efficiency and that it's okay to delegate. Um, but, you know, in the beginning, you're, you're trying to do all these things. There's a lot that goes into coordinating these. I personally, um, I really enjoy having um, an email campaign um, that's giving us the support, the consistency of that, um, the support that we give, the, the following that we've built. Um, and I think word of mouth has really um, helped. I, I opened an email from another um, networking society and I found, you know, our information there telling them you know this is what's happening tonight women grow talking about this topic click here for information i think that was one of the coolest moments too to to take a step back and see other companies give you um that organic shout out um for being you know validated in the community that people are hearing what you're talking about um it, all these you know societies you know I, I think that uh, is really special i think you know you plan and you plan um and you see it pay off, but there's no like direct roadmap. You know, I when I got the honor of working with Select, I, you know, I, I got to sit back and look at a company where they had so many diverse products, you know, and what can I do to showcase it? I, I find venues that are willing to make love potions and crazy drinks. They let me drag the furniture around to make sure I could fit my sponsors in the right way. Um, they'll hop on phone calls with me at all hours. And, you know, they, they love working with us, you know, so much that when we have progress, they're, they're just as excited as we are. You know, you find um, different places uh, that can support your vision and different people in the community that not only you know become a place that you get to work with but they get just excited about the events as you and you um, you find the right flow but I, each each month is different um, when I planned speed networking I had a I had to take a step back and think you know what can I do uh, to present this the right way so we found 20 uh, powerful females from uh, six different topics. We had three leadership figures at a table uh, for ownership, three marketing, three sales, three inventory management, three compliance, three um, publishing and writing. And, you know, I paired them with edible micro sponsors. Um, we always bring non-infused, of course, but I thought, you know, if we're going to have these powerful tables, we should have, you know, a branded snack at each platter. And if we're going to eat at these events, we should be giving representation to our local brands, building that awareness um, across the, the community. And um, I think watching that was different but that was unlike anything I've ever planned I had to reach out to so many people for so many moving pieces um, you know and that you know there's there's no roadmap and you know I hope to be able to, to revive that with a different theme and maybe go behind the scenes of the plant instead of in front with more of the business um, but you know you, you try to plan and think okay well you book these speakers this restaurant this platter no it is way more complicated <laughs> than that um, and what you do last month may be completely different than what you do next month if you're if you're doing a good job and trying to um, you know keep it stimulating um so i think um it's it's a learning curve um and i'm still learning um and i really um you know if i could go back i would definitely try to um have understood some of the tools that we have for marketing and um just all of that because that was new to me i i ended up doing sales you know and then mm -hmm. marketing kind of just happened <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so like what what tips do you think you would give to anyone kind of in your position you know just newly into this event space you know they you know they have a good personality for it but maybe haven't done it before in the past what, what, what kind of tips would you give um, for planning or networking uh, e either you know like what, what do you what do you think you know for yeah I guess planning what, what, what do you think you know the, some good tips um, just to follow up on L let me let me add a layer on there Can okay I, yeah, yeah so, sure so, I mean, go for it I mean here's the thing right like the can uh, as the the movement for cannabis is kind of blooming and uh, you know, uh, th there's a, a ton of events popping up, and I think a lot of people kind of gravitate uh, towards wanting to do events. And um, you know, maybe you know, how do you get started, right? Wh what would you say to to a younger, uh, you know, person trying to break into the event marketing space? Yeah, uh, that's that's a question I would ask. I like that. 
question. Uh, <laughs> my answer is worthy. Um, you know, I think you just you have to put yourself out there. You have to not be afraid to be told no or shut down for an idea. Um, you have to really get to know the culture of the people you want to work with. So many companies um, are so passionate about the things that they revolve their businesses around. Take a time to get to connect to those causes, to meet uh, those people um, when they glow about talking about what's most important to them or their company. Um, I think, you know, taking a creative approach. Um, you know, I really enjoy, you know, if I'm bringing in a topical brand, um, a CBD or a lotion, like I want to pair with a massage therapist. You want to do everything you can to, to showcase the brands. And I think the more you can, um, you know, balance, of course, time management with, you know, showcasing what makes them special, you know, is really what puts it apart when people, you know, participate in our events. We try to build an ambiance and environment, and I think it's so important um, that you give that love to your sponsors, to your participants, um, that you find, you know, ways to give back, you know, leave every company that you touch brighter. You know, with event planning, we get to be a creative platform for these companies to showcase their brands, you know, and they get do a million pop-ups. Um, you know, what can you do different to represent them? I mean, I was blown away when I saw the fashion show, the music performances, the, some of the stuff, the culture and cannabis, you know, that made me take a step back and say, you know, wow, look at what's what's possible. Look what people are doing. This is so different than any other event I've attended. And, you know, I hope to have that impact too for people. And I think finding a way to, you know, give back to your local community is everything. And um, Women Grow is a, a for-profit company. And ever since I've started, we've had that community tradition to do that charity raffle. And it's grown from one or two prizes to six to eight to, gosh, however many we can. Um, you know, it's, it, it's incredible and find, you know, causes in the community to give back to, even if it's just a little bit. It's always um, appreciated and it's always, you know, exciting to, to get, you know, built up for a great cause and try to just try to leave, you know, what you touch brighter um, and learn, you know, take the time, have the discipline. Um, there are a lot of programs um, that will make life easier too. I think um, people understanding even just something like Google Drive, if you don't have a fancy CRM technology, I think um, having that consistency, whatever platform you have, you know, Instagram and Facebook will give you more, you know, immediate engagement and more dynamic interact interaction, conversations. Um, but I really, um, I enjoy having an email campaign, an organized approach, everything from a save the date to um, an invitation um, with hyperlinks and logos of participants bios and headshots of speakers, um, that see you tomorrow blast, that post-event newsletter. Um, we were lucky enough to be able to send out the sold-out blast too, um, so people don't show up the door expecting tickets and try to minimize that too. Um, you know, I think having that organization, um, that predictability, because people want to plan around it. You know, Women Grow, we're typically the first Thursday of every month, which is a lot easier to plan around. April um, will be the 11th, a little bit um, closer to 420. Um, but, you know, typically having that, you know, routine down with your population, make sure that they go out of their way to be available for it too. Um, like you guys do with First Friday, everyone knows to expect it. It's not like yeah. you're just popping up on a random Tuesday, you know, people get excited for it. Um, and I think there's a lot of things you can do um, to stay current, to stay present, um, but it takes it takes hard work and, um, you know, we're not all experts in everything, um, but you have to, you know, work with the best. Find someone who can do what you can't do and do it better. You know, reach out to people that help build you up and find a team because um, no matter how talented you are, you know, you, you don't want to be that one man show with that kind of pressure because life does happen and it's, it's hard because you have to keep going when any other person um, would take time off to be with friends, be with families, to process life sometimes. Um, and having a team, having uh, people you can ask for help when you don't know the answer is everything. Nice, nice. nice. So I, I, I love your energy, right? <laughs> you, you. you have a great energy. And, um, you know, I, I, I hear you talking about community. I hear you talking about, you know, having a vision, organization, uh, you know, leaning on a team, um, you know, you know, putting things together, realizing that you don't know everything, right? And and, and all these things kind of, you know, they, they sum up a, a one word for me, right? And, and it's leader, right? And 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 you are, you know, the the, the women grow leader here in, in Nevada, and and there's so many women in, in this community that are doing incredible, incredible things. What, what what's it really like to to be a you know a woman leader doing amazing things you know right now what is, how does that feel inside it's you know it's always humbling and I hope it always stays that way um, I I can take a step back and acknowledge the impact that we've had um, which is tremendous um, but you know I think the first time it really hit me was when someone asked if I could be their character reference on a resume I'm like R really oh sure yeah why yeah. not I, yeah. but you know you take a step back and um, there's just a lot more respect in the air. Um, and it's, you know, it's something that you have to strive to uphold, you know, if you achieve that, that's great, but you know, you just have to still be worthy of that tomorrow and the next day. And I think, um, with leadership, you, it's the same thing. It's just continuing education for whatever you practice. 
Um, and I think, uh, you know, with Women Grow, we are we're cultivating cannabis leaders. You know, we are growing female professionals and, um, you know, our whole community. We have, it's, it's very exciting to see such a large uh, proportion of men too acknowledge what we're doing and participate. Because um, if you support women, we support you. Um, and I think, um, you know, being a leader is just continuing to, to strive for that growth, um, for that impact. Um, when I, um, when I started picking, you know, communities for that community cause, I, I read a testimonial from um, one of the companies that we've been able to contribute. Um, so we, e each month, as you were saying, we, we do try to um, give back. And Ink Ribbon Foundation um, was uh, one of the, the companies that's really um, just close to my heart. Um, this really talented woman, um, Kim Maddie, after um, having a, a double mastectomy, um, you know, she went through the, the stages of healing, of grief. And as a female, you know, you, you make it through uh, you know, the hardest things and you get your life at the end of it, which is such a gift. But then you look in the mirror and you don't feel as empowered. And she set up um, post mastectomy scar um, cover up tattoos, um, really uh, talented artists, only a few in the world that can really do nipples uh, with that degree of art, artistic talent, as well as floral designs, anything that just makes a woman feel feminine again. Um, and we did um, in October, um, we gave back to them. We had a few raffles um, and then we connected them to other companies that gave back to them too that month, which was really great. Um, and then after the raffle, we match up to $100 in donations. So we raised some money for them and then they got to come back. And when they came back, we said, you know, what's going on in your community? What's changed? What's new? Um, she sent me um, a testimonial from one of the women that uh, we helped. I mean, it's, it's a very expensive process to get these tattoos, even when you find companies that are willing to help and trade and be a part of it. It's still the cost of supplies. I mean, everything it, everything is expensive. Um, so we were just a small piece of that contribution, but I cried. I was <laughs> in public eating <laughs> with my computer, planning a Women Grow event um, <laughs> at one of my favorite breakfast spots. Riddle Cakes, really good. Um, and I just, um, I started crying because um, I just, I knew I was in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. I was in the middle of a transition myself in between jobs, just finding the right path for myself and just trying to make more time. I, I feel like the more time I can give to women grow, the, the much better these events and these connections become. So that was really hard for me to take a step back um, from full-time sales and you know give back to this organization. But we finally got to that level of growth where it was now an option. Um, and I just, um, that was the, the moment I just knew I'm in the right place at the right time, helping people, educating people, connecting people, um, and that testimonial was just, you know, it was just a few words, but it was, it was everything to me. Um, and that's, you know, that's what I hope, you know, I get to be a leader for um, and just facilitate change, be the domino, you know, even just education, I think, as a leader, if you can open people's mind, um, you know, especially with bud tender education, I mean, you, you get them to realize, you know, that they can offer that regimen of products and that person comes in and your education changes their recommendation and you maybe change a life. I think um, what you say has impact, whether you say it to one person, whether you say it on a podcast that can get replayed. I think what you do, you, you're accountable for and you're um, a facilitator of change. And I think um, you have to just continue to be worthy of that and put that energy forward so it can ripple out and truly change the world. One person, one thought at a yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> thousand percent i mean th <laughs> this is the cannabis industry yeah right this is what it is it's impact it's change it's wellness you know it's recreational it's a good time i mean it, it, it's 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 an incredible plant yeah it, you know that's wonderful things and you know um uh citing my homie david tran the top, the, about the union that the plant makes right with everybody and everyone around it and um you know just how special it becomes to people and yeah how influential it can be Listen, we, we, we really appreciate you being here. Um, I, I'd love it uh, if you would, you know, maybe come speak at one of the, the mixers that we have coming up yeah. soon. Yeah, be an honor. Um, you know, love to. your participation in our events mean the world to me. Um, uh, you know, your your impact I I is felt, and, and we appreciate you. And uh, wh where can they find you? Let's let's talk about some. Uh, yeah, plug plug yourself <laughs> right now. Plug <laughs> Thank time. You. Um, okay, so um, you can find us if you go to womengrow.com. You can search and find any chapter. You can search by town, by state, and you can find us. Um, once the events are posted, you can get tickets through them. You can find Women Grow um, on Instagram at Women Grow. Um, you can also find us on Facebook. And then I have my own personal accounts too, um, where I, um, you know, have a combination of my life, everything from family uh, photos to. Um, you know, women grow events to my aerial yoga side. I, I may start to break those up so I can really develop each. But right now I like having that all in one place. So that's at R. Perrick, my first initial, my last name, 
R-P-E-R-R-I-C-K. Um, when I'm doing events, I'll always at least post the, the Save the Date flyer on there. Um, sometimes I'll choose some of my favorite photos and highlight some of the, the past events. Um, and if you catch me on a, a good day, I'll also post some of the aerial photos that just make my soul happy. Um, we just did the birthday party, so there'll be some really cute aerial kids photos coming soon. Nice. Um, so you'll find that on Instagram as well. And if you ever want to participate, we are always looking to build um, the community, whether you want to sponsor, you want to participate, you want to just come in and see what it's about um, or be part of our, our raffle. And we try to uh, make all different types of packages available to people so you can pick you know, how you want to participate um, and what's best uh, for your return, um, whether that's a company or, or just a person looking to grow. Um, and you can email us with more specific questions at lasvegas at womengrow.com and reach directly out to myself and my team. Nice. Beautiful. Yeah, Beautiful. thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. You crushed it. Thank you. You did a really good job. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it. Thank you guys so much. The Culture and Cannabis Podcast, Episode 5, Rebecca Perrick, JC Coates, Full-Time Tony. See you soon. Peace. <laughs>